I remember when I was um, in high school, I had a program that I used later in my work as well, which is now called FL Studio. But at the time, I think it's still called this, but it was Fruity Loops Studio. And uh, you make like kind of techno stuff and beats. And I remember making a lot of things with that um, and playing around with MIDI. I would definitely do a lot of things with MIDI, which I still use MIDI for my composition. Um, and I got really into music at the end of high school. I went to music school after that. And uh, I actually ended up leaving music school because I was working on all these creative projects and starting, you know, my websites, uh, writing the royalty free music and everything in college. And uh, my professors didn't really like that. They wanted me to spend eight hours a day in the practice room. Uh, I was a uh, trumpet. I played trumpet in college and uh, studied music education. But I really wanted to write music and do my own thing. And I ended up leaving music school um, and starting my websites. At the time, it was a different website. It was like a blog for artists and indie artists. Um, but I had a section of it where I offered music. And it was really casual. At the beginning, I would just give it away for free. Um, and I don't think I have any of those compositions on my site now. That was a, that was a long time ago. Um, and over time, I moved it over to its own website. And um, I was doing a lot of different projects. I did comic books. I did uh, websites. Um, I did some writing. But always in the background, I was doing music. And, um, you know, maybe every couple of weeks or every month I would write something and put it up and improve my website and it kind of just evolved over time from something that was you know very small a page on another website to its own thing and um, now it's my entire business pretty much where um, I write as much as I can and I uh, offer it where people can buy licenses to use it. Um, my favorite thing to write is probably music for films. I told you that earlier. Um, I don't think you were recording then, but um, I also said that uh, my ambient music is probably my most popular. So uh, I have a lot of people using that in uh, movies and guided meditations and classes like online courses and stuff. And uh, I really like making that music but uh, I do think film music is still my favorite. Uh, so which one do you find more challenging when you create? Uh, music for film or meditation music? Um, I don't know. I think they both have their own challenges. Um, I worry that people think, you know, the meditation ambient music is like, oh, it's so simple and easy. But I spend so much time um, kind of trying to perfect those tracks and really uh, putting a lot of heart into into them. Um, you know, the, the main complaints I got early on when I was making ambient music was like, oh, this instrument is jarring or I don't like this or whatever. And, you know, that sticks with you. And in order to make it effective, I think you really have to, I mean, most of the time I spend is just tweaking every like uh, note and every phrase to make sure it's super soothing and just the way I want it. Um, so that's pretty tricky, but I, I think I would say that like film music and sort of like the classical kind of contemporary stuff I make is probably more difficult because it's just more complicated. Um, I know you like this sort of solo piano stuff, which is really fun and maybe a bit easier to write, but some of the stuff I do is like sort of a full digital orchestra um, and I use those fancy VST instrument packs to do those that can take a long time and uh, I put a lot of work into every section like I've got the violins and the violas and everything and um, it's so much fun to do but um, it definitely takes a while so I would say probably 
the orchestral stuff. Yes, I noticed with the meditation music, it's there are a lot of there are definitely more layers than the ambient or film music. Yeah, there are. I mean, usually I start with um, I mean, whenever I write music, I often have like a plan, but it's very loose or a vibe or a feeling that I want to go with or like an instrumentation. Um, and then I just sit down at the piano and I just like I pull up the instrument I want to use or I pull up the kind of synth and I just start playing and playing until I find what I want. And as soon as I find it, I, I'm like, here we go. And then I just put it down. I sort of record it and I record different sections. And then it's a lot of putting them together and making it work. And then yes, adding layers, lots of different soundscapes, synths, pads. And um, I really like putting more traditional instruments in the ambient music. Um, some of my more popular ones I wrote a long time ago, and I would just create this kind of like sweeping soundscape with pads and synths, and then I would improvise over it with uh, piano or harp. They have to be instruments that are soothing, I think, because most of my customers do like meditations. <laughs> um, one I like a lot, and that's pretty popular is called piano meditation and I don't really like that I named it piano meditation because the piano is kind of secondary it's it's mostly ambient but if you listen to it I just improvised the whole thing um, the piano part um, so I would have the back track of the, the synth and then I would just improvise the piano for about 30 minutes I think <laughs> and it was really fun to make and uh, I sometimes do that now but uh I definitely and I've used that track time. as well. Oh, you have? Yeah. <laughs> Great. I think so. Anything with piano you, you seem to use, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, when it's your name with the piano, oh. then uh, I don't need to check. <laughs> I know I'm going to like it. That's great. You're really I just, inspiring me to make more piano music now. I'm going to do that next, I think. <laughs> Uh, but that being said, uh, this is actually a very important thing I would say to you as an artist. Uh, the first time, also because Rebirth is a fairly new track, which I'm also using. Mm -hmm. uh, it does not sound like your music. It's great. It, yeah. It's very different. The first time I heard, I loved it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like every artist could be a musician, a filmmaker, an actor. We all have our own style. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can recognize that person by say, saying, oh, I, this guy does this thing. So I know it's yeah. his work or her work. I agree. With that track, I could not tell that's your work. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it was Thank different. You. Yeah. I, I, I want to try and branch out a little more like that. And, uh, you can get caught up in kind of doing your, your same thing, especially when, you know, for so long you were kind of, grasping at straws for some form of success and then you start making a living doing what what you love and I think sometimes when I sit down to write I'm thinking I gotta make something that people will like and I definitely with re Rebirth for example that was something that I wrote that I wanted to write for me um, and I wasn't thinking about is this going to sell? <laughs> and that can definitely get in the way sometimes, I think, when you're kind of trying to continue your business or speak, whatever. I can't speak for anyone else, but just for me personally, I noticed one thing is that every track uh, you've told me that you wrote it for yourself, mm -hmm. that was like a, that was a track that I instantly liked. <laughs> Oh, so awesome. I suggest you write more music for yourself. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I need to. I mean, it's one of those things where you know that you should, but it's really hard to not think, oh, I'm, I'm sure you think that too. Like, what would the audience think? I mean, maybe sometimes you want to do something super weird and experimental. And uh, I think I can learn something from this conversation because, yeah, those are the things I'm probably most proud of. Even and though they don't sell as much. <laughs> well, they sell 
here, here's the difference between like film and music. Like film, you'll watch, uh, you'll like it or you won't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing with music is music kind of grows on a person. So yeah. you have that little, I wouldn't say advantage, but there's that little thing that kind of works with music. I agree. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And yeah, I'm excited to write more music for me now. And uh, <laughs> I know you'll buy it. <laughs> you'll use it in your film. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, your name and piano, that just needs to be there. <laughs> Okay. That, that, that sells. That's it. Okay. All right. I know what I'm doing next. <laughs> For any young uh, aspiring uh, musicians, mm. what advice would you give them? Yeah. Okay. Let me think. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, you know, it's hard because we live in this kind of internet world now, and um, you see people kind of get famous overnight sometimes and I remember when I was starting out I would get very discouraged and feel very stressed I would I would desperately want to just become this overnight success or have something go viral or whatever and I did have things go many times things go viral over the years and they never like well never number one made me happy and never really resulted in any sort of success and I think what that taught me is that that thing you see sometimes where somebody makes something and oh my gosh then suddenly they're super famous online and they're really successful and they've got a million followers and it's like oh that's what I want that is so rare and um it's not something you should shoot for uh I think <laughs> you know you're gonna get discouraged and um I think a way to I believe I told you before, my goal was always to make a, a living doing what I love to do, which is create, you know, whether that was art or music, you know, those are passions of mine. And music was what worked for me. Um, and uh, I like that goal. Um, and what I would do if I were doing it again is to just put yourself out there um, and be okay with just creating and sort of shamelessly putting it out there. Make a lot, you know, make as much as you can, but don't force it. Don't make it a chore. So whenever you're inspired, just write. Um, for me, it took a long, long time. I mean, how long have I been doing this? Um, I think started 2008 so was that 13 years ago that's when I started releasing my music and it probably took me eight or nine years before I could honestly say that it was like doing something for me and that I was making a difference at all with my music before then it was just something I did but I think the reason why it worked for me when so many of my other sort of passion projects didn't work is because I never made music a chore and I never forced myself to do it or I didn't really care. I, I just kind of always had in my mind, like, I love doing this and I like this idea of offering music, at a, you know, for filmmakers and stuff. So I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to keep doing it because I love it. And um, now I'm really happy to say that, it, you know, it's how I make my living. And uh, I've done pretty well with it. And uh, people write to me every day saying how much, uh, especially my meditation music, you know, has helped mm -hmm. them. And uh, I don't think that would have happened if, if I had treated it like some of the other things where I was kind of obsessed with this idea of I got to make it or I got to to a new piece of music every Wednesday or something like that's how I used to do everything else I just kept it fun and I made a lot over the years because I really enjoyed it and uh, I mm -hmm. think it paid off so that's what I would do just put it out there and keep it light and fun because then you can't lose because for me I would have been happy making music and nobody hears it for a long time 
Um, so you really can't lose if you have that mentality. Uh, that's great. Uh, I totally agree with you because you can't really force uh, creativity. Yeah. It's just, it comes when it comes. Like you have an idea today, maybe tomorrow, and then day three, it's just going to vanish. You have mm -hmm. to wait for it. And like we said no. before, you do it for you too. That, that, yeah. I, you know, I forget that. I, I think, you know, I get inspired to write music and sit down and I'm like, okay, I'm going to write music now. I'm feeling inspired. But then what gets in the way is, you know, what are people going to like? And I think you're 100% right that when you just make it more personal and just let it flow out of you, that's when you make your best stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really good. That's Thank you. Man. <laughs>